When the Pilgrim Fathers came to America in search of religious and political freedom, they settled in the northeastern sector of our country, known as New England. A part of New England, after the English county of Hampshire, came to be known as New Hampshire. New Hampshire is a land of history, of contentment and charm. Here are quaint covered bridges. Here are cities and towns older than our nation itself. Here are village greens and town meeting houses. And here, near Franklin, is the birthplace of America's great orator and statesman, Daniel Webster. New Hampshire is known as the Granite State. And from her quarries are taken the materials from which are fashioned some of our finest buildings and monuments. Since pre-revolutionary days, when the tallest and straightest trees were felled for the building of British naval vessels, lumbering has played an important role in New Hampshire's economy. Today, the state's greatest natural resource is still her forests. And prominent in the state's industrial picture are those industries associated with her vast forest reserves. At strategic points, such as at Berlin on the Androscoggin River, a large share of the nation's total supply of wood and paper products are manufactured. The industrial metropolis and largest city in the state is Manchester, situated on the Merrimack River. Here at Manchester, as at more than 40 other locations in the state, the manufacture of textiles and textile products contributes measurably to the state's industrial wealth. The leading industry and the largest employer in the state is the shoe industry. Here, the skill and experience of thousands of workers combine to manufacture more than 20% of the nation's total footwear requirements. One of the four largest cities in New Hampshire is Concord. Concord is the state capital, and the stature of the state's fine constitution is exemplified by her magnificent capital building. The only harbor in New Hampshire is at Portsmouth, at the mouth of the Piscataqua River. Portsmouth is the home port of a sizable fishing fleet, with a yearly catch which is far in excess of the state's own requirements. As in all of New England, good education is a tradition in New Hampshire. Over 2,500 public and private elementary schools, high schools, and academies provide facilities for the education of her youth. Higher education is offered at the University of New Hampshire at Durham, while at Hanover is Dartmouth College, the state's oldest educational institution. From her halls, many have gone forth to contribute no small share to the growth and destiny of the nation. Many of New Hampshire's early settlers came to seek a living from the soil. Today, the seacoast region and the fertile valleys of the Connecticut and Merrimack rivers are the state's principal farming areas. The production of milk and butter combines with the production of poultry and eggs to make up the greatest source of agricultural income. And when it comes to the tasty item department, Certainly, we can't afford to overlook these huge, luscious strawberries. An industry which is almost synonymous with New England is the maple syrup industry. New Hampshire can claim her rightful share of this industry, and the seasonal tapping of the trees and the gathering of the sap is fascinating, not to mention profitable business. 
One of New Hampshire's leading industries is catering to the thousands of visitors who yearly come to share her extraordinary scenery and recreational offerings. Tens of thousands of acres in state parks and reservations provide variety to be found few places in the world. For those of you who are looking for a thrill, here you have it in the Cannon Mountain Aerial Tramway. It's a fascinating, breathtaking ride. And as your car nears the summit, there is an unforgettable view of the White Mountain National Forest. One of nature's most awe-inspiring works is this giant profile of the old man of the mountains sculptured out of the granite cliffs at Franconia Notch. And here's a real sensation for the visitor to New Hampshire, the famous Cog Railway up Mount Washington. This has long been a favorite tourist attraction, an exciting adventure as the puffing locomotive pushes the car up the steep incline to the top of the tallest peak in the presidential range and the highest mountain in the northeastern part of the United States. Yes, New Hampshire can offer practically every recreational attraction you can think of, from lakes and mountains to the inviting sands of her fine beaches. But come wintertime, thoughts turn to winter sports. These are some of the things, then, that add up to New Hampshire. The village greens and meeting houses the importance of her main natural resources, water power, quarries of granite, and vast forests. The lofty grandeur of the old man of the mountains and the quiet charm of the state's oldest educational institution, Dartmouth College. The harvest given up by the sea at the state's only seaport, Portsmouth. The unforgettable journey up the Cannon Mountain Aerial Tramway or the thrill of the ride up Mount Washington on the famous Cog Railway. The state's important industries, the production of textiles, of wood and pulp, and of shoes and other leather goods. Milk, butter, poultry and eggs, her greatest source of agricultural income. The strength of good government, symbolized by the state capital at Concord. The tapping of the trees and the gathering of the maple sap. And the exhilarating thrill of speeding over some of nature's finest snow. Yes, these are some of the things that add up to New Hampshire, a colorful countryside with all the timeless advantages that a lavish nature can bestow. New Hampshire, the granite state, extends a standing invitation for all those who would come to share her natural and man-made bounties. For New Hampshire is one of the most friendly states in this land of ours.